Yo, welcome to the channel if you're new here and welcome back if you're not. It is shot by Kurt. Today's video, Canon R5 2023, should you buy one? So in short, the answer is yes. At this point, all of the cameras are dope. No matter if you shoot Canon, Sony, Nikon, Fuji, all of these cameras are dope and it's a matter of, you know, the person that, you know, their preference. At the end of the day, all of these things are tools and they're helping us either do our job or express our creativity in one way or another. So let's just get that out the way. So the R5 has been out pretty much since July of 2020. So going on about three years. And then when it came out, it was plagued with issues. But we gonna fast forward and skip over all that because there's several videos, several hundred videos, I'm pretty sure, on the same topic, so we're not gonna do that today. So being on the other side of them issues, one of my favorite things about the camera is custom video modes. Now, I shot with a Canon R6, and we are gonna touch on that in a minute, but I shot with a Canon R6, and it didn't have custom video modes, but it does have custom photo modes. The reason why I like the custom video modes so much is just because it's so convenient. I could set my shutter speed, my frame rate, and you know whatever I wanna shoot in 4K, 8K, or 1080, and you know with a touch of a button or two i can pretty much switch and not have to worry about my settings and i can get my shot off pretty quick so if i want to do you know a vlog style shot or something like that i can switch to 24 a couple buttons i can switch over to uh, 4k 60 or 4k 120 to do b-roll and not have to change shutter and potentially miss the shot so that's one of my favorite things about you know the r5 but i can name a bunch of my favorite things all i want but for you what do you do and how much are you looking to spend i mean personally speaking if you're a hybrid shooter you need crispy photos crispy video then i mean the r5 is pretty much it but if you're not looking to spend four thousand dollars plus and i say plus because not just after taxes getting the cf express type b card they start at like 300 bucks to get well if you get a 256 it starts at like 300 three hundred and thirty dollars something like that if you get a 512 then you know it's up there so like five hundred dollars that you got to tack on not including if you get body only and then you got to get a lens and you know so it's it's a pretty penny so if you're not looking to spend you know four bands on a camera body then what you can do is get a canon r6 or even a canon r6 mark ii the canon r6 mark one being $2,300 and then the Mark II being $2,500 and this is body only. So that's about like a $1,500, $1,200 to $1,500 difference that, you know, that's a lens, or maybe even a couple lenses depending on if you decide to get um, non-L glass, you can get uh, $35 for I think four or five hundred dollars. I think the 85 is like four or five hundred dollars. The 16 mil is three hundred dollars. So you can get a few lenses for that twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, you know, if you were to go that route. So even if the 23 or the 2500 is out of your budget, Canon also offers other full frame um, entry level sort of pricing cameras that you can invest in if you want to do that. Um, I think starting at maybe $1,200 or something like that. So over the course of owning this camera, I actually started shooting a lot more long form and less, you know, short form things like music videos where, you know, a take could be three to five minutes, give or take, depending on like, you know, if you're shooting the whole song or just a verse or whatever, but the takes are a lot shorter. So you don't have to, you don't even touch the 30 minutes that, um, you know, the camera, lim the camera limits you. But I've been shooting a lot more long form podcasts, events, you know, speaking engagements and things like that. And the record limit, it's it's not it. As a bypass, I use the Ninja V, but I mean, putting that together when you want to just kind of put things on sticks and just let it roll, it's it's annoying. And I do it because, you know, it works. More than likely, you're going to end up switching to cinema. But for the time being, the Ninja V is gonna have to work. Speaking of the Ninja V, an annoying micro HDMI. It's terrible, ultra unreliable. And if you do decide to get the Canon R6 or the R5 or anything with a micro USB, I mean a, a micro HDMI, have like three of them on hand because they break easy. No matter what brand I've gotten, it didn't matter. After a while of it being wiggled and whatnot, 
it breaks fast. Gripe, Canon, stop it. Stop doing this. It's not it. I mentioned the camera being plagued when it first came out and overheating was one of the main things, if not the main issue that this camera had. And you know, after several updates, I think I want to say like the one 1.5 update might have been because we're on 1.8, 1.8.1, 1 and that with different conversation. We on, the 1.5 update is the update that kind of almost killed overheating. I haven't had any overheating issues since, not even a warning. Um, they introduced some new features that you could you know turn on and it could be more heat tolerable. So with that being said, the cam everybody knows that the camera has 8K and I don't shoot 8K much, but what I do do, do <laughs> what I do is I shoot 4K over sample 8K. And I've been wanting to do that for a long time, but I couldn't because of the overheating thing. Now, you would ask like, why would you do that? It doesn't change the file size any, it just gives you a little bit more clarity. I like to punch in. Um, it definitely can help you give get like a more dynamic edit, especially like if you do a lot of things on sticks and the camera's not moving. So then you can like get different punch ins and things like that and make it look like a different angle or something like that. So I love, you know, having that and that's a pretty much a luxury. Like the regular 4K is okay, but I just like having, I like shooting the down sample, uh, you know, 8K as much as humanly possible. So. Yeah. So like I said in the beginning, it depends on what you do and what you're trying to spend. One. And then two, if you're not looking to go into Canon, then, you know, Sony has plenty of options. Uh, Fuji has options. Nikon even has options. So, you know, sky's the limit. Um, but I own the Canon R5 and I feel like it's worth it in 2023. If you took anything from the video, like, subscribe. Good vibes.